Hello friends, welcome to risingpearl.com. This is webisode number 10. Today we are going to look at how to solve questions on surface areas of combination of solid figures. This is part one because we are going to start from easy questions and then we will slowly move on to more difficult questions. So the first question goes like this. Two cubes, each of volume 125 centimeter cube, are joined end to end. Find the surface area of the resulting cuboid. So the first thing we notice is we have not been given any image. So we have to draw our own picture. So what is given is that there are two cubes. And both the cubes, each of them has the same volume. Right? Now, so let's draw two cubes. So we have drawn two cubes. Now we know that a cube is such a shape where each side they measure the same amount. So the height, if the height is A unit, length will be A unit and this depth or the width will also be A unit. So let's write it over here. So each of the three measures, the height, the length and the width, they are all A units. So now, if we have a cube, then the volume of a cube is, the volume is A times a times a. In other words, it will be a cube. If the volume is a cube, for each one, what is given is this is actually 125 centimeter cube. So this a cube is equal to 125. Now if you notice, a cube, 125 we can write this as 5 cube. This will take you some practice to get to know the cubes. So 5 5 is a 25, 25 5 is a 125. So if a cube is 5 cube, then taking cube root on both sides, we get a equals 5. That means a is 5 centimeter. Each of this measure is 5 centimeter. Now what is given is that these two cubes, we are going to join them end to end. So now let's try to do this. So we get them closer and closer. And this is how both are joined. So we have a new cuboid. So for the new shape, the height still remains A, as we can see. Now the, what happens to the length? Now this was A, we have one more A. That means the length from here, it has actually become 2 times A. Right? So the length has become twice A. The height still is A. And what about the depth? Depth is still A. They say that the depth hasn't changed. So this one will be still A units. So the only thing that has changed is the length. So we have a new cuboid whose length is twice A, whose breadth or the width is A, and whose height is A. So we know, and the value of A is 5 centimeter. That means the length is 2 times 5 or 10 centimeter. The breadth is 5 centimeter and the height is 5 centimeter. So if I am given any cuboid whose length is given, breadth is given and height is given, question is can I find out the surface area of the cuboid? Answer is of course yes, we can find this out. So now let's clean this up and see how we will write it in the exam if this question is given. So volume of a cube is A cube, where A is the side of the cube. So A cube equals 125, or A cube equals 125 is written as 5 cube. Taking cube root on both sides, we get A equals 5 centimeter. Next, since we join the two cubes end to end to make the cuboid, the length of the cuboid is A plus A. Like we said, if this is A, this will be A. So the total length from here to here will be actually 2 times A. Right? The breadth of the cuboid remains A, like we saw, this length remains A, this does not change. And similarly, the height does not change. The height remains the same. Right? So the height is same. So we know the length, we know the breadth, we know the height. So TSA, or total surface area, what is what we need to find? of the cuboid is 2 times, we know the formula, 
length multiplied by breadth plus breadth multiplied by height plus height multiplied by length. Or if you just put the values for L, B, and H as 10, 5, and 5 respectively, we see that the total surface area is 250 centimeter square. Now, you could have argued that instead of putting the two cubes side by side, we could have put one on top of the other because the question does not state how they are joined. And I will agree with you. Instead of stacking them side by side, we could have put one on top of other. So in this case, what would have happened? So again, the, the height is A for one cube. The length is A for one cube. And the width will be A for one cube, right? If you would have gone this direction, if you would have put them one on top of the other, then what would have happened is that the height would have gone up. So the length, if this were our scenario, the length would have been a unit, right? Or this would have been five. Breadth would have been, or the width would have been a, or it will be equal to five. The height would have been a plus a or twice a or because a is 5 it will be 10. So the length is 5, breadth is 5, height is 10. So if you do the total surface area using this you will still get 250 centimeter square. So it is totally up to you. You could have gone with let's call this option A or you could have gone with option B, if this is option B. So regardless of which way you would have solved this question, your answer would be 250 centimeter square. Let's take a look at one more question. A vessel is in the form of a hollow hemisphere mounted by a hollow cylinder. The diameter of the hemisphere is 14 centimeter and the total height of the vessel is 13 centimeter. Find the inner surface area of the vessel. Again, here there are no figures and no shapes given to us. So we have to draw it off our own. So we have a hemisphere and then we also have a cylinder. So the vessel is a combination of a hollow hemisphere and a hollow cylinder. So what we have done, we have done a, we have drawn a hollow hemisphere and we have drawn a hollow cylinder. So if we combine them in this fashion, so now this is a vessel which is given. Now what are the measurements that we are aware of? So now because they fit, the let's see, the diameter of the hemisphere is 14. So this is the hemisphere. So the diameter, if this is the radius r, so twice r diameter is equal to 2r. This is given as 14 centimeter. So from here we know that the radius of the hemisphere is 14 divided by 2 or 7 centimeter. So we know the value of r. Now the total height of the vessel is 13 centimeter. So the total height, now if this is the top of our if this is the top circle of our cylinder, so this is the height of the cylinder, right? So let's say this, h is the height of the cylinder, and then from here to the base, which is this height, what is this height? This is basically nothing but r. This is a radius, so this is r. So this height is r. So the total height, the total height of our vessel Let's write it as total height is equal to what? This will be equal to h, which is the height of the cylinder, plus r. But this is given as 13 centimeter. 13 centimeter. That means h is equal to 13 minus r, and we know r is 7. So height is 6 centimeter. So we know r, which is 7 centimeter. We know h which is 6 centimeter. It clearly doesn't look that way from the drawing but again remember that this is not a construction question. 
So it does not matter that this which is 7 cm looks much smaller than the height which is 6 cm. So what is important to note is that the radius of the top and the bottom circle of the cylinder is known. Because the hemisphere just perfectly fits the, the cylinder, so the radius of the hemisphere is same as the radius of the bottom circle of the of the cylinder. So we know the, the radius of the cylinder, we know the height of the cylinder, we know the radius of the hemisphere. So we should be able to find out the inner surface area of the vessel. So in other words, so what we have to do, let's clean this up. The inner surface area of the vessel will be equal to the curved surface area of the hemisphere plus the curved surface area of the cylinder. So it is very important to understand because we are trying to find out only the inner surface area. So think about it this way. So this is basically a vessel and if you want to paint the vessel in a certain color, right? So what is the area on which we are going to apply the paint on? And this is actually a hollow hemisphere which is mounted by a hollow cylinder. So we are going to apply the paint on the on on this part right on the curved surface area of the cylinder so if i can actually try to you know shade it in a different color so this is going to be the curved surface area of the cylinder and similarly so we are not going to factor in the top this will be left out and similarly on the bottom basically there is nothing on the bottom we have a we have a hemisphere. So then this will be the curved surface area of the hemisphere that I'm actually shading it a little differently that we have to add. So to find out the total inner surface area, we have to actually, that should be equal to the curved surface area of the hemisphere, which is here, and curved surface area of the cylinder. And we have seen in our earlier uh, episodes what is the formula to calculate the same. Right? So the curved surface area of a hemisphere, we know that the total surface area of a hemisphere is 4 pi r square. So a curved surface area will be this divided by 2 or this will be 2 pi r square and r in this case is 7. Right? So square or this will be equal to 7 times 7 will be 49. So 49 times 2, 49 times 2, this will be 8, 1, 98 pi. So this one will be 98 pi, right? So the curved surface area of the hemisphere, which is 4 pi r square is the total surface area of a sphere divided by 2, 2 pi r square, r is 7. So it will be 98, 49, 2 is a 98 pi, this much centimeter square. Similarly, if you look at the curved surface area of the cylinder, right? So the curved surface area of a cylinder, the formula for that is it is 2 pi r h. So it will be 2 times pi times r is 7 times height we saw was 6. So this will be this will be 42, 7, 6 are 42 times 2. In other words, this will be 84. So this will be 84 pi centimeter square. So if you were to add these two, so the total surface area will be equal to, I think we got it as 98 pi plus it was 80, how much was that? Let's take a look at it quickly. It was 84 pi. 84 pi. So from here, if you just simply add them, and then let's just do it this way so quickly. So it will be 2, 8 plus 4, 12, 1 carry over. So 9, 9, 18, 1, 8, 2, pi and you can actually now replace pi by 22 by 7 
and you can go ahead and solve it. So you can replace the pi equals 22 by 7 and you can solve it. So whatever the value you will get, it will be that much centimeter square. So again, it is important to break down the question into small, small bits and then use your common sense to figure out how the actual shape should look like. And then use the formula for each of the portions that we need to find out and then finally figure out what area should be added and or subtracted to get the required area. So it kind of goes back. So now one just brief point I want to make was what if, if instead of drawing the circle, the shape like this, you could have thought about the hemisphere on the top. So you could have thought maybe the hemisphere is on the top and the cylinder is in the bottom. In that case also, you would have got something like this. It just made sense because if you pour liquid or any kind of stuff on it, that the vessel is of this shape where the, the base is a hemisphere. But clearly, when you if the figure is not given in these kind of questions, the language will be very clear for you to know which goes on top and which goes on the bottom. Right? So even if, if you would have drawn it this way, you would have still got the same answer. So just wanted to refresh the strategy to solve these type of questions is number one, try and visualize, try and see which simple figures, which solid figures such as cubes, cuboids, cylinders, cones, sphere, etc. They make up our complex figure. Right? Then next up, is find out which areas should be added and or subtracted to get the required area. And finally, we will simply calculate each of these areas, right? We find out each of these individual areas and then based on what areas we need to add and or subtract, we calculate the required area.